Hey there, friends. Jeff Fritz here. And I got a chance to speak at Microsoft Build about streamlining application testing with .NET Aspire and Playwright. And I want to recap and talk to you about that because there are some really cool tips that you can learn from this demo that I think you can take advantage of, you can learn from, and I'm even going to give you the source code so you can tinker with it at home or at the office afterwards. All right, let me show you what I'm talking about. So we know that .NET Aspire, that's a that set of libraries, frameworks, and tools that, that gives you that stack for building observable, production-ready, distributed application systems, right? We get things like smart defaults and application orchestration, a cool developer dashboard, service discovery capabilities, and great integrations using containers with all kinds of different databases and services that you already use out there. And we're going to take this and stitch it together with Playwright. And we've used Playwright. Playwright, for those of you that haven't tried it, is a cross-platform and cross-browser testing framework that works with Chromium, Firefox, and WebKit across Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. It's fast, it's reliable, it's great. You can use this to help with all of your end-to-end -end testing capabilities. It's got a great set of APIs that work in all kinds of different languages, including .NET and C Sharp, like I'm going to use here today. Now, of course, there's different types of tests that we're going to work with as we're building our application systems. You might be familiar with unit testing or even doing a little bit of integration testing. But when I'm working with .NET Aspire, I want to do the third one here. I want to do some end-to-end -end testing to validate the full application workflow because I might have other microservices, databases, and other capabilities all stitched together across a .NET Aspire system that I want to use and test with something like Playwright. So let me head over to the code and show you my sample code that will get you started with understanding a little bit more about what we can do with .NET, Aspire, and Playwright. Here I am in Visual Studio Code, and you can see my test project over there in the Explorer. So I've written a couple of pieces here that I've labeled as infrastructure that set up and manage .NET, Aspire, and manage Playwright. You'll be able to download and look further at these classes with the sample code that I'll give you at the end of the session. Now, Take a look here. This is my Playwright Manager. This is what's going to manage my interactions with the Playwright service so that we can go and, and navigate a browser to explore our application system. I've even got a property here that's set up called isHeadless, and I'm going to set that up to just be false. I want to see the browser actually running for, for the purposes of our demos here. But when this initializes, it's going to go and set up some default timeouts, create access with Playwright, so it starts a browser for me. And you can even see here, we're going to launch the Chromium browser. That's the engine that runs both the Google Chrome browser and our Microsoft Edge browser, and interact with, with whatever we send into it to go and navigate to. I've also got my Aspire manager that I wrote here that gets a reference to the Playwright manager and knows how to configure my distributed application for testing, and then it gives me the ability to actually build that application so we can navigate and interact with it, start it up, and then it'll be running, and our tests can then interact. And we, of course, have some dispose capabilities here to clean up our application so that when we're done testing, everything gets shut down properly for us. Finally, I have some base Playwright tests here that bring everything together in this abstract class. This is the building block that all of my other tests are built upon. And you can see it brings together my Aspire Manager and my Playwright Manager so that those two pieces can work together and my tests can tell Playwright how to find Aspire and navigate around the system. Let me show you a little bit further down here. We have a configure method that does exactly those things here, right? It's going to go identify the URLs for where the dashboard is running, pass along the information so we can log into the dashboard as well. We can interact with pages using this method that, 
that takes a delegate here, that takes, takes a function that defines exactly how to navigate around using some of our standard playwright test methods. And you can see here, it's actually going to go and have things set up and navigate around and find the service that we want and interact with that inside of our tests. So I have tests that are built over here. This is my first set of tests called Weather Hub tests because I'm, I'm going to work with a little application that's set up to interact with the United States National Weather Services APIs and present the current weather to me. So I, I wrote a test here called Search for City, and I'm using XUnit's theory and inline data capabilities, as you see up here on lines 26 through 30, so that I can tell it, go search for these terms and look for these cities, look for these weather stations that we want to see more information about. And our application is going to go find the My Weather Hub application that Aspire is managing, go to the root of that website, and start navigating around. Uh, click into the column options on a quick grid that's in there and navigate through and actually search for one of those cities. And make sure that we, we can actually find that exact location text. Once we do, our test has passed and move on. Not bad. Let me show you how this runs over here using the testing capabilities in Visual Studio Code. I'll just go to that search for city and click start on those tests. And I'll move the browser over here that Playwright is using so we can watch it interact with the application. Here it is starting the browser, and there it is already into the website, and you see it navigating around and closing the browser and reopening it as it navigates around, and I can see in 17 seconds, all of those searches worked exactly the way I expected it to. And now it's cleaning up and shutting down the service for me in the background. Great. But Playwright with Aspire can do more than just interact with and, and write some tests that we're working with here. We can actually use the Playwright MCP to interact and explore and do more discovery capabilities inside of our, our application system. So I wrote a prompt like this to, to do some exploratory testing. Launch the app host project, navigate to the dashboard that's reported in the output with the direction log into dashboard, um, make sure that the Weather Hub service is running. Open a browser to visit it. This is a weather forecast page. And wait for the grid to finish loading with the locations, the city names out there. And we're going to click the button for the column options. And let's search for Chicago. And uh, let me know if you find any weather entries out there. So I'll just click start here with Copilot in Visual Studio Code. And it's going to start the MCP, and interact with it. So first, of course, it's going to run the application for us. So you see there, it's going to run it down here in my Visual Studio Code terminal. And once it's done, it's going to find where that dashboard is running. It wants to wait a little bit here, so we'll let it finish loading. There we go. It's found the dashboard URL. It's opening that up. And we can see down here, it's going to take a snapshot. It's going to look at the dashboard here for us. And now it knows where the website is, navigates to it. And now it's actually going to start interacting with the website for us. And we can see it over there on the left side, doing this exploratory testing for us. It's having a problem identifying exactly the access it needs to that button. So it's trying again. There it is. It found the search button. And now it's actually going to search for Chicago. And there it is. And there's no values for Chicago. And it's, it's going to report that back to me here, that there's zero items instead of the original 3,600. And it doesn't know what to do there. It's going to clean up and stop the application for us. That's great. We did a little bit of exploratory testing there, and, and it worked for us to go and discover exactly 
how our application would interact with um, Playwright here. Really neat stuff, but that's some valuable content that we saw there that it did handle the search properly when it couldn't find anything. So let me just let me just codify that. Let's turn that into a test, right? Um, let's turn that exploration into a test that verifies when a location doesn't exist that the website handles it properly. And I've already got some tests out there and they're saved in a file called weatherhub tests cs. So I'll tell it to run that prompt in the current chat. Just continue on there and let's see what it's able to generate for us so that we can extend our test capabilities that are interacting with our larger application. So you can see here it's parsing and looking at that test file for us. And, and now it thinks it knows how to do it and it's going to generate a test for us inside the class. There we go. We can see it's doing the exact same things that it was doing in the previous test. And it cleaned up some of its code there. I'm going to remove this little bit because I think we only need one test that is down here. So let's run it with the rest of our other tests. Here it is, search for non-existent location. I'll let it run that test. We can see it built properly down here in the terminal. And here we go, it's gonna spin. Starts up the application and it's gonna walk through that test scenario for us. And the test ran properly. Fantastic. Now, We've got the test running properly, and we can run all of our tests here, but let's actually modify the application and make sure that it still works when we add our new feature. So I happen to have already started down the process of building a feature that's going to work with our application that will go summarize the first day of weather forecast data and set up a background image behind our forecast it kind of fits the vibe for the, the type of weather that we're expecting. And it's going to use a little bit of Azure OpenAI services to reach out and interact with that. You can learn more about how this summarizer works when you see the source code that I'm going to give you at the end of the session. So it's just going to reach out, put that summary into, into a, a property here for us, and it'll format the background based on that summary. I can go back over to my tests, and now I can run all the tests, including those where I do actually have a city, and I'll know immediately if, if I didn't break my application, and I can then go through and actually look at what this, this experience is after we're done running through all of our tests here. Now, of course, in, in a CI CD scenario, I wouldn't have the browser display for us. I would turn that off, but for this demo, it's kind of neat to see it navigate through and interact with all the things. And there we go. In about 20 seconds, we know that we didn't break anything inside of our application. So I can, I can stop everything here and head back over to PowerShell, start my system, and actually take a look at what this, what this looks like. So there's my Aspire dashboard. I'll click into my weather application and I'll give it a try here by searching for my hometown. I'll search for my hometown, Philadelphia. And there it is when I click into it. Here's the weather forecast for, for this week. And you can see it's, it, today it's going to be sunny, a little hazy, 
Um, hot with highs in the mid 80s. That's, of course, Fahrenheit. We use Fahrenheit here in the States. And I get a nice sunny background image based on that forecast. Really cool stuff. I had Playwright and Aspire help me test and verify that this application is going to work well as a complete system that knows how to communicate and interact with the National Weather Service API and cache some of that stuff using a Redis cache in the background. Let me head back to the slides and get you up to speed with some of the other resources that you might want if you want to take a look further into what we saw as part of these demos. So, of course, you can learn more about Playwright at playwright.dev. And Aspire, the .NET Aspire system is available at .NET slash Aspire. Now, the MCP, the model context protocol that we used with Playwright, my friend, uh, Debbie O'Brien has a fantastic video introducing all the things that you can do with the Playwright MCP at this address, bit.ly slash playwright dash MCP dash YT. And the source code for this sample, if you want to dig into that further, you can find that on my GitHub. I set up a bit.ly for you, bit.ly slash aspire dash playwright dash demo. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you want to catch more of my content, you want to see more of what I'm doing online on, on live videos or other content, you can find me. I am C-Sharp Fritz on all the places on the internet. Thanks so much for watching.